So it's a 9.7 inch iPad. You pretty much know what it is, but let me introduce you to the new iPad Pro. The smaller brother to the almost 13 inch iPad Pro. I'm just gonna call it iPad Pro. I'm not gonna call it 9.7 inch iPad Pro. I'm not gonna call it Steve. It's just, it's just iPad Pro. And you pretty much know what you're gonna get with an iPad. You're getting iOS, which is gonna work exactly what you'd expect. You get access to Apple's pretty awesome ecosystem. Just what you'd expect. You're getting a tablet that's gonna perform really well like you'd expect. A9X in here hums along. Uh, I wish that Apple would have added four gigs of RAM like they did with the larger version of the iPad Pro, but I have no speed issues at all. Apple's vertically integrated all their stuff. They control the hardware and the software, so you'd expect it to be a relatively fast machine. Uh, but there are some nice surprises that Apple crammed into this. Uh, the biggest one for me is the true tone display. The resolution stayed the same, the same retina display we've had for a few years, but the warmness is gonna change depending on what environment you're in. And the idea is for holding a white piece of paper in different light, it's gonna reflect light, it's gonna look different to your eyes. This does almost the same thing. It's really subtle, but it makes reading things and watching video on the screen a little bit more pleasurable and enjoyable, and you definitely notice it uh, when you're using it. In fact, if you try and turn it off, it's gonna be very obvious uh, that it's not there. So a really nice bit of technology from Apple, and one I hope makes its way to the rest of Apple's product line. Uh, other additions here, you now have a 12 megapixel camera on the back. Essentially, there's eight the same sensor from the SE and the 6S. So you know it's a pretty solid sensor. Pictures look great, colors look nice, good low light, good normal light pictures. Don't be the person that's using your iPad as a camera, even if it can shoot 4K video. Just don't, don't be that person. Don't be at your kid's soccer game holding it up over your head. You're gonna look silly, use your phone. Just, it's better that way. But if you do decide to use this to take pictures, which I'm telling you you shouldn't, you're gonna be welcomed by a camera hump on the back, which for the life of me, I got a really hard time understanding why it's there. But it is, hump and all. I just, I named this thing Humpty, not Steve. So the same accessory line is available with the larger version you can get here as well, compatible with the iPad Pencil. Uh, you can get a smart keyboard, take advantage of that connector uh, on the bottom. We've covered those at length though with the first uh, of the iPad Pro. So we're not gonna go too much detail. Suffice to say the Pencil works really well. If you're a graphic designer, it's gonna be an incredible tool for you like to take notes in class or in meetings. You may want to consider picking one up, although it's gonna cost you an extra hundred bucks. Picking a price, and we're gonna talk a lot about this at the end of the video. The price has gone up now from $4.99 to $5.99. That is gonna get you an extra 16 gigs of storage. So 32 is now your entry level point, all the way up to 256 now. So there's a lot of storage uh, in this thing. If you didn't like the color palette before, you can now get rose gold here in the iPad Air 3, iPad Pro, uh, if that's something that you would want to take advantage of. It boils down to this. It's fast, multitasking works great. A9X is a fast processor, despite not having the same RAM as a large iPad Pro. It can't have any performance issues. Touch ID is quick, as you'd expect. A lot of this iPad is exactly what you know it would be, when you buy it. But that's not the end of this review. I've long been an admirer of Apple's products, but I've also called them out when I feel like they are wrong. I feel like they are wrong with the iPad Pro, not because it's not a good tablet. It's probably one of the best 9.7 to 10 inch tablets you can buy. My issue though is with the price. Since the iPad first debuted in 2010, almost six years to the day of filming this video, it's been $4.99. And when you went from the iPad to the iPad 2, to the iPad 3, to the iPad 4, to really just iPad retina display, the iPad Air to the iPad Air 2 to this guy, price has always been $4.99. Apple slaps a pro name on it, so it it's $5.99. Now we've seen spec increases before. We've seen increases in RAM, 256 to 512 to a gig to now two gigs. We've seen screen resolution bumps. Storage has started the same though at 16 gigs, and I get that. It's doubled here to 32. An extra $100 for those increases make no sense to me at all, especially when you factor in economies of scale. That extra 16 gigs of storage costs Apple's pennies and you expect updates and upgrades from generation to generation but what this offers upgrade wise versus the ipad r2 is nothing different than what we've seen for other ipad iterations as they get better actually hundred dollars something really hard to rationalize i don't know what do you guys think am i off base do you not care would you still happily pay the price i'll let us know in the comments down below and please give the video a thumbs up we always appreciate it until next time i'm john Ritter, back in buffalo talk to you guys in the next video